Right, the timing of this is is, is uh, worrying. F five, six weeks out from Christmas now, but it's not new. Talks have been going on here for three years. It's resolved nothing. Unions have striked um, yeah, quite, it... quite constantly in that time. So, I mean, how does this get worked out in the next f four or five weeks? Well, um, I'm not sure about this particular dispute because, you know, we haven't passed those new laws through the parliament yet, but it is an example of why we need to. We need to give the Fair Work Commission the power to get the parties to sit down at the table, uh, even if uh, even if they don't want to, uh, yeah. to sit down at the table and work through disputes like this. And we've got, you know, a number of disputes that we're looking at across the country. I think in New South Wales, we're looking at um, train strikes uh, again shortly. Another example of where if a dispute becomes intractable, it's useful to have an umpire that can sit people down and force them to uh, force them to negotiate a dispute through. Right. Speaking of negotiations, promising talks between the Prime Minister and President Xi uh, at the G20. Realistically, and, and again, we might be getting ahead of ourselves here, but when might trade bans be overturned by China? Is there a kind of t a loose time frame that you might have in mind at the moment? Oh, look, uh, as soon as possible would be in Australia's interest, but I don't think anybody who watches these things closely thinks that uh, there's going to be big changes overnight. This is a, a very important first step. It's um, opening a door and we need to make sure that we're taking the opportunity now to work through those trade disputes which have been completely unfair from day one and have cost Australian farmers in particular uh, a great deal. We want to see um, a the trading relationship back on an even keel with China. Uh, I'm also very pleased to see that the, the um, free trade agreements with ASEAN and New Zealand are being uh, updated at the moment because it is a reminder that the more diversified our trading partners are, the better for Australia. Just a final one in your wheelhouse here, Tanya, ending plastic pollution by 2040. Uh, how are we going to meet those targets? Yeah, it's going to be tough. We, we've had a... The previous government set a target uh, of 70% um, of plastics uh, being reused, recycled, diverted from landfill by 2025. And we've been stuck at 16% for four years. So it gives you an idea of the scale of the challenge that we're facing. But I'm off to tyre cycle now. I'm at Erskine Park. I'm off to a tyre recycling place right now. We know that by investing, we can upgrade our recycling facilities. We've got a quarter of a billion dollars set aside to upgrade uh, our recycling infrastructure. Um, we'll work with states and territories and with the private sector to collect more of this stuff to stop it going from landfill. But also we need to create the demand for the recycled product at the other end. So we're looking at all of the measures possible to do that. I met with environment ministers um, from the states and territories uh, a few weeks ago and we've determined to, um, to, to have better regulation in place by 2025 so we can meet those targets. OK. Tanya Plibersek, uh, live for us there in Sydney. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you again soon.